theater. In the theater. It's it up in the theater. What is that? Is there a theater here? Yeah, up there where, you, where the Dave set his thing in front of the theater. I believe there are at least two non-physical conscious residing on this property. One is the man and the other is the woman. During my review I came across several answers which I felt were intelligent responses, both from the man and the woman. Now these responses, along with the claims of PK activity on the property, such as phantom touching, talking, physical interactions, items moving, make me believe, at least on a preliminary level, that the site is a legitimate host to some level of hunting. So of the two intelligent spirits on the site, the one I wanted to focus on first was the woman. Primarily because her responses seem to show the most intelligence. And secondly, because I think we have the potential here for it to actually be more than one woman or one woman speaking for a group of individuals who may be on the site, which may potentially lead to there being more than the two original man and woman intelligent spirits on the site. Now the reason that I believe that the spirit of the woman here is somewhat intelligent or shows signs of being mindful or conscious of us being there is because a few responses that we got during the portal session showed a very detailed intimate understanding of what we were asking of her. One of the main responses that I found really most interesting was when in speaking to her, we asked her, can you tell us what the people look like here? You know, we originally were speaking to her and we were like, well, how many people are here? And we got a reply of 10. And then with the three of us, we were like, well, there's seven more of you here. Who are they? Do they look like us? And in a response, we get 
her saying they're like you, meaning they're physical. They look physical. They look just like us. So we said 10, there's three of us and seven of the other people. What do they look like? They're what? And to me, that was one big sign of intelligence out of her, that she could actually understand our question, think consciously about what these people look like who are there with us, who we couldn't see, and then give us a response, letting us know they're just like you. And with her saying those things, at first you may not think, well, you know, that things like that happen, but what I find is that I want consistency in answers like that. And she showed that. I mean, there was the clip where you hear her say, in the theater. In the theater! In the theater! It's it up in the theater! What is that? Is there a theater here? Yeah, up there where you worked the day set his thing in front of the theater. And that directly pertained to Patrick's question. He asked her, you know, where are you at? Where are you at in the building? And her answer was in the theater. Now, not only there is she giving him a direct answer to his question. She's actually describing an actual physical location within the building. So she understands the layout of the building. She perceives the building and she can tell him. You want to know where I'm at? Well, I'm in the theater. I'm over here in a theater. This is where I hang out. This is where you can find me. And then you can hear that it, that it sort of surprises the hell out of Patrick because he wasn't expecting that response. And so it, it changes the whole environment of the investigation because you're not talking and experiencing something that's necessarily. Re no, you're, you're not talking to something that's residual. You're talking to a potential legitimate intelligent hunting something that interacts with you something that knows exactly who you are potentially knows why you're there if you want to go into parapsychology terms thinking about ESP and telepathy you know and, and it begins to really paint a picture of why they think and feel that this site is legitimately hunted because they've experienced things like in the beginning, I did mention that <laughs> the claims were basic PK activity, things like touching and moving. But to elaborate on that, the claims are that a little girl being heard laughing and playing doors opening and closing on their own. An apparition of a man being seen down the back of the hallway, like the sounds of footsteps walking in the back room and touching and pinching people. These are all extremes of PK activity from a potential spirit. And in this situation, when you might be dealing with an intelligent woman spirit or an intelligent man spirit, and you consider the claims that are here in the building, you begin to understand and they sort of feed off each other. Well, these responses are incredibly intelligent. They understand the layout of the building. They can consciously see that they are self they're self-aware and on top of that they roam throughout the building interacting physically with the people there now the psychological aspect of that we really don't know because we haven't sat down and had long conversations with the people there but these kinds of huntings are known to affect people over time and when we went throughout the building, we did EMF, EFRF readings, and nothing was really stood out that much. There were some areas of the building that had higher EMF readings. But to put all of those things aside and, and to really take a second to think about what you're experiencing here, you have intelligent spirits that have some level of just strength some level of consciousness and now, now I don't know if consciousness is directly related to strength of a uh, entity but but here if I went solely off of claims 
I would say, man, this place has got all kinds of activity going on. <laughs> and then to come in and to use the portal device and to get some of the EVPs we did, you, you sort of sit there for a second and go, wow, this deserves further examination. And, and you may ask, well, John, what, what, what is the real significance between a residual hunting and an intelligent hunting? Have you ever seen someone watching a movie and they're sitting there and let's say it's a horror movie and they're sitting there and they're watching it and the guy's friend just got killed. And he's and he's like, well, what am I going to do now? Should I jump in his car and escape or should I go back in and see how my friend is doing or see who the killer is? And you start yelling at the screen and you're like, man, get the hell out of there. What the are you doing? Like, just go, go. That person's not going to interact with you. The TV's not going to suddenly talk. The script isn't going to stop and he's going to and he's going to say, hey, oh, yeah, you're right. You know, I, I should go. This thing's got four wheel drive. I can get out of here so quick. <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. But in that scene, that person or in this case, that ghost or spirit is living out something. Now, it goes further into depth than that. I mean, typically with residual huntings. It's a matter of like a skipping record. Things just repeat. Images repeat like the footsteps I mentioned in the claims that could be residual hunting in some ways. But what when you want something to prove to you that, hey, this is really a legitimate intelligent hunting, you want one on one interaction. Talking to the TV is not one on one interaction. It's you talking to yourself, basically. The TV's not going to listen. But one-on-one -on -one interaction is a back-and-forth conversation bet between two mindful, self-aware people. And in intelligent huntings, that's what you want to see. Because residual huntings, to me, are more indicative of like a natural occurrence that just happens within a site. It's like you are, you're putting a, a stereo jack into history. And it's playing back for you. The residual huntings vary from intensity, but they can't be on command. They just sort of happen when they happen based on probably some environmental condition or just something we haven't been able to measure yet. But when an intelligent hunting, you know, you have one on one interaction with a spirit. And from a technical investigation standpoint, we have to rely on things like the S box digital recorders, you know, REM pods, um, your EMF, EF, RF meters, and just general review. Now, if we had a psychic medium on the site, which we 100% need to do, then we're really getting somewhere because what we have now, excuse me, <laughs> is substantial. It's good stuff because we thought she gave us a name of like Sarah. So what's the girl who said hello to us? <laughs> it was Stacy. Oh, yeah. it was Stacy. She said my name in one instance. My name is John. Can you say hi, John? Oh my God, she just said hi, John. Yeah, it sounded like it, didn't it? That's it, buddy. She nailed it. Thank you. That was beautiful. Um, she's responding to Patrick, telling him where she's at. Mm -hmm. They're talking about us and who we are. They're telling us what they look like. And more. So, with something that intelligent, if we get a psychic medium, a medium psychic on that site, that interaction between those two could be something phenomenal they can back up our claims and the information that they'll get from each other 
will really put a strong foundation into what we get. And then from there, you know, we can start looking at history and things like that. But I got off track a little. But with this woman, I really do believe she is intelligent. You know, as I said before, this is preliminary. This case is something I would probably want to do at least two more times to build up sort of a a case study on the site. (laughs) Um, It's interesting. Before I go and talk about the man, which I've done some a little, but not a direct conversation about him. I want to speak to one response that we got. There's a clip where we get a woman or a child saying they can hear us. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, Um, His name is Michael. I don't know if you're saying Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you, hon. Now, based on her intelligence and the responses we've gotten already, I have to begin to consider, is she speaking for a group? Is this another woman speaking? Or have we been speaking to multiple people within the site? And if they're speaking for a group that further goes to give support to the original question, when she says, well, they're like you, well, there's three of us, seven of you. So now we have this continued conversation along with validation of what she's saying and substance to support it. Now, who are the other seven people? I believe there's a woman. I believe there's a man. And then the rest we don't know much about. Now, if we continue to go back to the site, we're looking at situations where maybe on certain days at certain times based on how we present ourselves to them or just what's going on in the environment. These additional individuals speak up. It could also be a situation where these individuals don't want to speak, but they interact in some other way. The little girls laughing and playing, the doors opening, people being touched and pinched. Maybe this is how they communicate. Even to go so far as to say the footsteps. So this is where I begin to think and the case study starts to build. Are we dealing with two intelligent beings or seven? And when, when you get responses like this, this is why you have to really see, can we go back? Now, if you have like a psychic medium or a, psych, a psychic on site, they may be able to answer that question for you there on the spot. And even then, once you get them to answer that question or you get that relationship with the psychic, you might bring another one on. I, I really don't advise you continue to introduce different psychics because spirits in my opinion build relationships with the people they connect with there is an energy exchange that goes on and just like people you have trust in others and you don't have trust in other people (laughs) and they operate the same way but to really close this little section out about the multiple individuals that might be there we need to go back and play these clips and ask them How many of you are here once again? And can some of you introduce yourself? I have other pieces of evidence that I just don't post because I don't think they're strong enough to put out. Um, I may try and put some of those here inside of this commentary. Because there are other things that were said and more context to the questions we asked. So we'll see. Now, when it comes to the man there. I'm not so sure as I am with the woman that he may be intelligent. Some of the responses he gave were vague and fairly indirect. Some were direct, but more indirect than direct. Um, He popped up a few times where his voice came through sort of wondering, you know, what the hell is this? In my mind, my interpretation is he wants to know what what we're doing, what the equipment is. We get him replying regarding uh, the do you believe who Jesus is? And we get an answer if he's nothing to me. 
I, I want to talk to the man in here. I want to know who you are. Tell me. Who is Jesus Christ to you? You know, we ask, well, <coughs> excuse me, what is his name? I ask the women that, and then I get a man or a child or someone that comes through that says Thomas. What is his name? Girls, could you tell me, what's the guy's name? And there were additional questions that he answered, but for the most part, when we were running the S-Box session, he would interject. You would hear the woman talk, or the woman talk, and then he would sort of interject and stop, and then you would get like a lull in communication with her. And I don't think we were dealing with the active versus inactive channels of a spirit box or S-Box. But I do, if you want to know what those are, I have a video out where I do a small little study on the ghost box, or excuse me, spirit box. Basically, your inactive channels are the channels where you're not picking up um, radio stations. Your active channels are when you have radio stations in. If you look at, if you go online and look at your local area and look at the radio stations that you have, they'll correspond directly to your spirit box communication, and you'll find when you get a bunch of chatter and when you don't. Um... <laughs> I have more on that on the video, but the thing with him was at one point we get a response to a question, which Dave at the time thought it said, uh, Beezlebub. What's the name of the guy that we keep hearing? Oh, trying to say it. What's his name? Don't be afraid. And then from there, the way I've taught myself is once you have any questions like that, I don't think they will come directly out and say that, excuse me, <coughs> come directly out and say that. But once you have that, you sort of have to, well, me, I have to see what the hell is going on. So I started asking him a few religious questions. Do you believe in the Holy Ghost? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Um, are you religious? Things like that. Because I, you know, the one was, are you a human spirit? And the response I got was, repeat this. I'm going to ask you something. I want a yes or no answer. This is to the man. Are you a human spirit? Quite honestly, I don't know how to interpret that response. But anyway, so I wanted to press him on his uh, spiritual beliefs because I want to see how he might respond if he is something malevolent versus if he is just your everyday Joe. I do think at this point he's just a normal man. You know, a lot of times we confuse malevolent for just disgruntled are a person's personality more often than not what you're dealing with is a person's personality or a spirit's personality not something malevolent but we pressed him on this issue and we did get some responses i'm still not sure i do think he does have some level of intelligence but he does not speak um, patrick actually has a thermal camera picture of him that we believe is of him as a tall, that there's like a shadow figure in one of the back hallways. This is another situation for verification where you have to repeat the site. You have to go back again, maybe for a final investigation to really see what you're dealing with. It also is a situation where if we had some kind of a medium on us, it would have helped. But that is the life of technical investigating. I work with some mediumship, but I have not been doing it lately. <laughs> so overall, 
I think the man has some level of intelligence. I do think he is conscious in some way, but he simply chooses not to talk. Um, he could be a guardian spirit in some ways. He could be just another one of the seven who are there. That's something we need to look into. So overall, I do think that if I had to go with which of the two are the most intelligent and conscious, it is the woman. The man may be in some kind of a state where he is conscious, but there may be other things involved with, with him. Um, you know, not everywhere is peachy clean. So maybe there's something there that's, that, that is surrounding him. Maybe he just, that's just his, his disposition, <laughs> which is his prerogative. Um, when I think about the things and the claims on the site, like the phantom touching and the footsteps and things like that, they make complete sense. The, from what I've heard, everything is active there all day long. Uh, a lot of times people get this conception in their mind that paranormal activity happens when the sun goes down. That just is not 100% true. These things are active all day long. And when you're dealing with conscious entities that are intelligent, if I haven't be beaten that into your head enough, when you're dealing with conscious entities that are intelligent, they tend to operate the same way they did when they were here. If they op, you know, if they did their things during the day, that's what they'll do. And then they'll sort of falter out at night and they'll rest. <laughs> There's an investigation at the place called the Gill House over in Galleon, Ohio. And I had a conversation with the uh, local team who sort of um, fosters the home. And he told me, you know, at a, at a certain hour, this place dies. Now, if you believe that at a certain hour, certain things start to come up. Sure. Because, I mean, all it does is just, to me, that's just the same argument. If they're conscious and they did things during the day, okay. If they're conscious and they did things at night, depending on what they are or whatever it is, they're going to pop back up at night. Um, but, it, but in terms of this place, I don't feel anything malevolent. Um, I do think you have intelligences there who may make you uncomfortable because, you know, who isn't sort of unnerved by somebody pinching them that's not there. By somebody laughing and giggling that's not there. By, you know, footsteps that should not be there. And so these things are all natural in, in, in the world. So this place is definitely a place that I would like to continue to investigate. Um, if I do find or go back there with Patrick and Dave, I'll let you know. I'll try and put something else out. And for those of you who actually sit and listen to this. Thank you. I'll try and do this more often because I don't think it's enough for me to just put evidence out there. I think the additional commentary explaining what I'm thinking and how I operate is important. So thank you for listening. Um, I'll try and fit some clips in here of some of the extra stuff I did. Stacy. Stacy. What? Dude, that was that was pretty cool. That was an absolute. Hi. Are you lost? Are you searching for what? What? What is his name? Girls, could you tell me what's the guy's name? <laughs>